Hi, welcome to this statistic class in Excel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how we can create summary statistics, how we can perform correlation coefficients, how we can calculate measure of location such as the mean, median mode, and how we can create frequency distribution based on quantitative and categorical data. Therefore, let's get started. To create the summary statistic, it is important to enable the required add-ins, the data analysis add-in. So to do that, I'm going to click on the file and then I want to choose options. And then I can see the tab to the left. I want to choose add-ins in French, it's called complement. And then I can see the manage Excel add-ins. So click on go. And then I'm going to see the analysis tool pack. Please check this and then click OK. We're going to come to the data tab of the ribbon, the donate tab in French. And then I'm going to see the data analysis in French utility, the analysis. And then we can go on and create our summary statistics based on our quantitative data. In this case, we have the grades for all our students. So I'm going to click on data analysis. And then I want to choose descriptive statistic in French, statistic descriptives. Double click. And then for the input range, I'm going to click on the box. And then I want to choose this cell. The cell B8, control shift down arrow key, control backspace to jump to the top. And then this is going to be by columns. So we want to say vertically. And then we're going to check these labels in the first row if it is not checked. So make sure this is checked because we included the label. And then for the output range, I'm going to click on the box and I want to choose cell D9. And of course, I want to generate this summary statistics. So please make sure this is checked and then click OK. There we go. So we have the summary statistic for our grid. We can see the mean. The mean is approximately 67. And then we can see the standard of error, median, mode, standard deviation, and so on. Now, based on our grid, we have the minimum score of 30 and maximum of 99. And then the sum of all this grid is 4,327, representing 65 students that took part in our examination. So this is basically how we can generate the summary statistics. However, we don't know how many students score between the range of our grade. So that's going to lead us to the frequency distribution. So in frequency distribution, we have what is called beams. Now, the beams allows us to group our values into two parts. For example, in our case, we have 0 to 35. So we want to see how many students score between 0 to 35. So we also have 35 to 40 and so on and so forth. So we have the lower beam and the upper beam. Now to create our frequency table, we're going to be focusing on our grade and the upper beam. So again, I'm going to click on the data analysis and I want to choose Instagram, double click. And then in the input range, I'm going to control up arrow key. So from cell B8, control shift down arrow key, control backspace to jump to the top. And then for the bin range, I want to select all the upper bin, including the label. So select that one. And then make sure labels is checked. For the output, I'm going to choose this cell. And then I want to see the chart output. So click chart output. And then I want to choose or click OK. And there we go. So we have our frequency table. So we can see that there are four students that score between 0 and 35. And then we can see that we have seven students that score between 65 and um, 16. Okay. So this is basically how we can create our frequency table. And then we can scroll up and see our frequency or the chart output. So there we go. So we have the y axis which is the frequency, and then the x-axis, we have the beams, the upper beam. So we can even customize this to make it look good. Now, I'm going to click on that chart, and I want to come to the chart design, and I want to choose the star. So this is my favorite for frequency table. And then I want to make this chart to be dynamic, the title, rather the title. So a single click to select the chart title, and come to the body for build. Put equals, and I want to link that up with this value here, and then press enter. Lovely. So we have our chart output for frequency table. Beautiful. So we're going to come to the correlation coefficients. Now, the correlation coefficient measure the strength and direction of linear relationship between two variables. 
usually called variable x and y, and it is represented with the R symbol. Now we can use the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, or we can use the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. But we want to focus on the Pearson's correlation coefficient. Now in correlation, we have three outcomes. When R is greater than zero, we say there is a positive linear correlation. And now we can have either strong positive or weak positive linear correlation. And of course, when R is equal to zero, we say there is no linear correlation. And then when R is less than zero, we see there is negative linear correlation. Again, we can have strong negative linear correlation and then we can have weak and we can even have medium. Okay, so these are some of the outcomes. So we'll focus on this formula. Now, before we come to this formula, let's understand our data set. In our data set, we have the month of January to December, and then we have the social media spending, and then we have the revenue. So we want to check, is there any relationship between our spending and our revenue? So let's focus on this formula. Now, we want see this formula. We can divide it into two parts. We have the upper, the numerator, and the lower, the denominator. So we're going to solve this problem individually. We're going to start off with the numerator, and then we want to start off by looking at or understanding what is this x value. Now, this x value represents each value of our spending of our variable x, and then minus the x mean. The x mean is the average of all our x values. And then we have the y value, which is the value of our revenue, and then minus the y mean. Now, the y mean represents the average of our revenue. So let's start off with this, or taking the um, mean of x and the mean of y. So for the mean of x, I'm going to call it, I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to use the average, because we are dealing with mean. So we use the average function Excel to calculate mean. In French, it's called the moyenne function. So I'm going to select all of these, and then close the parenthesis and press enter. So this 1.94 represents the mean of x. So I'm going to go ahead and drag to the right, and then 194 represents the mean of y. For the value of x, I'm going to type in e equals, and I want to reference the cell B2 and then minus. So for the mean of x, I want to click on cell B14. I'm going to apply FNF4 to make it absolute and press enter. And I'm going to double click to copy down the formula. And then I'm going to do something for the y. So the value of y this is going to be our revenue minus the mean of y. So the mean is the cell C14. FNF4 to make it absolute. Press enter to copy down the formula. There we go. Now we can go on and get rid of these parentheses by multiplying this value of x minus the mean of x by the value of y minus the mean of y. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to type in equals. I'm going to take the x multiply by the y and press enter i'm going to double click to copy down the formula and then i want to sum at the bottom here so i'm going to use the alt equals so this gave me 113.39 now this value represents the numerator so we've solved the numerator now let's come to the denominator now for the denominator we want to come here first we want to actually raise the value of x minus the mean of x raised to power 2, and then the same thing for the y. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to type in A equals, so I'm going to take this x for our x, and I'm going to use the caret symbol raised to power 2, press enter, I'm going to double click to copy down the formula, I'm going to do the same thing for the y, so A equals the A2, and then I'm going to use the caret symbol raised to power 2, press enter, and then double click, and then I want to sum this x raised to power 2 and the y raised to power 2. So I can use the alt equals. This gives me the other sum. Lovely. So now I want to come here. So we want to calculate the sum of squared for x multiplied by the sum of square of y. So this is going to be this value multiplied by this value. So I'm going to type in equals. So I'm going to take the g14 multiplied by 814. Press enter. So this gives us 15,759. So I want to take the square root of this value. So I'm going to use the square root function in English. So SQ square root function in French is called Racine function. So I want to take this value and then close the bracket, press enter. So this gave us 125.54. So this is going to be the value for the number denominator. So we can go on and use equals to calculate our our, our linear correlation. So I want to take this numerator divide, so we have the divide line, 
by the denominator press enter lovely so this gave us 90.33 so this simply means there is a strong positive linear correlation this simply implies that just yes, as we are increasing our spending we are making commensurate revenue so we can keep on increasing our spending on social media and then continue to expect more revenue lovely and then we can even check this out i'm going to come in and use the correl function now the correl function in french is called coefficient correlation or correlation coefficient so for my array one the x variable i'm going to take all this value and then i want to put in comma for the array two i want to take all the revenue the y variable close the bracket press enter so this gave us 90.33 the same okay so we have strong positive linear correlation now we can create charts to visualize this so i'm going to select my array one and two x and y variables come to the um insert tab and i want to choose the scatter chart and then i want to choose the scatter chart there we go so we have the scatter chart so we can see that uh, our bubbles actually trained upward from the bottom to the top so this implies a strong positive linear correlation and then we can display the trend line so in the chart design i'm going to click on the chart title and choose the trend line and i can use the linear alternatively i can click on this plus sign and i can choose the linear click on this icon and i want to choose the linear there we go and of course we can even close up this environment what do we do i'm going to click on the x variable or x horizontal axis right click and choose format axis and then uh i'm going to move this a little bit to the left so i'm going to do that again so i'm going to come back here or right click format axis so i want to adjust the minimum bound to one point um let's just do like 1.25 and press enter so there we go so we are able to close up the space so we have our linear so this simply means as we've said there is commensurate revenue from our spending so we can keep on spending more on advertising and then get more revenue so that is it for the correlation coefficient so i'm going to come to the main now for the main we can just um, look at the sample example or sample data we have the bnp rated customer so we have the customer satisfaction between eight seven nine and so on so we want to calculate the mean of our customer satisfaction so i'm going to use the average function and then i want to take all my value and close the bracket press enter so there we go now the main customer satisfaction score is approximately or by average 7.4 out of 10. now this is not too bad but we can actually try to work towards achieving like 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 satisfaction so this is how we can use the mean to calculate customer satisfaction so i'm going to come to the median now in the median we have this real estate prices so we can take the mean and then we want to see the median so i'm going to type in e equals the average function to calculate the mean and then i'm going to select all my values control shift down arrow key control backspace close the brackets and this gave us 376,874. And then for the median house price, I'm going to type in the median function, select all the same range, and then close the bracket, press enter. So this gave us 316,317. So we can easily focus on using the median price for our real estate values. So let's go to the mode. Now, the mode basically shows or it calculates the frequently occurred value in a range in a range so so in our case we have this book journal and then we have the sales now we basically have the unique books here we have the fiction mystery non-fiction science fiction so we we'll won't come here and use the count a function in french is called the nb.c function so for the range i'm going to select all this my book journal put in a comma and then for the criteria i want to select all of these unique book and then close the parenthesis press enter and then to calculate the percentage of the frequency i'm going to type in e equals take this value as the numerator divide by the sum and then I'm going to sum all this value and then close the bracket press enter i can double click to copy down the oops i can just track that a little bit 
and then I can use the other sum. So this gives us 100%. So I can use, of course, the max function to give me the mode. So equals the max function, and then I can take all my book jail frequency, close the bracket, press enter. So this gave us seven. So based on our categorical data, we can see that fiction book is the most purchased books by our reader. And then we can do the same thing for using the pivot table, but because of time, I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna to go to the final path of this class, the frequency distribution, focusing on categorical data. So in our case, we have this sample data, we have this date, product, payment type, unit, price, and the sales amount. So we wanna focus, we wanna check, based on the frequency, which product is the best selling product. So in order to make it easier, I'm gonna apply Excel table to this data. So I'm gonna to come to the insert tab and click on table. Or alternatively, I can use control T and it's gonna show the create table data box. Click OK and I'm gonna close this. So I'm gonna maintain this default table one. So we can use formulas and P for table to calculate the frequency and then the percentage of frequency. Now let's use formula first. I'm gonna type in A equals. So I'm gonna use the sort function, in French 3A function, and then I wanna use the unique function. And then for the array, I wanna select all my products, look for this down arrow key, close the bracket twice, and then press enter. So this gives us the unique sorted list of our product. So to calculate the frequency, I'm gonna use the count if function again. So for the range, I wanna take all my products, and I want to put in a comma, and then for the criteria, I want to take all these criteria, close the bracket, and press enter. So this gives us the frequency. So we can easily tell that, oh, yeah, we are selling more of camera products. This gave us 286 frequency. Now, to calculate the percentage, I'm going to control V this year, and I'm going to just add the percentage, press enter. Okay. So again, I'm going to type in equals for the numerator. I want to take this I5 divided by the sum of all my frequency. And then I can F4, close the bracket, press enter. I can drag down the formula and I can use the auto sum. I can use the percentage formatting. I can even increase the formatting. Lovely. So we can see that the camera product represents 16.05 frequency percentage that's it now how can we use pivot table to achieve the same thing again i'm going to come into our data set and i'm going to come to the insert tab or you can even come to the table design and use summarize with pivot table and then i can choose the existing worksheets so i'm going to scroll up a little bit and for the location i'm going to choose this cell and then click ok so we're going to see our pivot table place order and our pivotable fields. So I'm gonna take this product into the rows, I'm gonna take the product into the values and repeat the same time, the same thing for the values. So there we go. Now, instead of seeing this row levels, we wanna see the name of the field, which is product. So I'm gonna to come to the design tab and choose report layout in French, disposition de rapport, and I wanna choose show in tabular form in French, and this is from the tabular. So I want to choose this and there we go. And then I can double click and rename this for the norm, the pers norm personally. I'm going to call this frequency and then press enter. And then I can come here, I can right click and I want to choose show values as percentage of grand total. And I can double click, I can call this one frequency percentage and let me just rename this and then click OK. So there we go. We have the same result. Beautiful. So let's see our chart output. So we want to see the column chart for the product by the frequency. I'm going to select these two um, columns and come to the insert tab and I want to come here, click on this histogram and I'm going to use in French histogram group pay in English cluster column chart. Click on that. And there we go. I can change this style. You can come to the chart design. And there we go. So we have the cluster column chart for our frequency by product. What about if you want to see the products by the frequency percentage? I can select this. Oops. I can select this. And then I'm going to come here. I'm going to hold down the shift left, um, the control key and the left click and 
cigars, and this is non contiguous selection or non adjacent column selection. So I want to come to the insert tab. I want to choose the same, or let's choose this time around the power chart. And there we go, we have the power chart. Again, I can switch to my favorite style. I can get rid of this, delete, and I can resize. There we go. So we have the cluster column chart for our frequency, and then we have the cluster bar chart for our frequency passing chart. So this is basically how we can create frequency distribution based on categorical data. So this marks the end of the first video. See you in the second video.